Welcome to the presentation on digital to analog conversion. This presentation is based on the premise that analog to digital conversion has been covered. There are several methods and circuits for producing digital to analog conversion operations. We'll take a look at a couple of these. Most modern digital to analog converters are available as either IC chips or as an integrated part of something larger such as a microcontroller or a microprocessor. Resolution and voltage resolution are also a part of digital to analog conversion. Resolution is a number of discrete binary values that can be introduced to the digital to analog converter and resolution is 2 to the n where n is a number of bits. Voltage resolution is the amount of output voltage change seen when a one bit change occurs at the input. In other words, how much voltage does each input bit represent? Voltage resolution is equal to the, um, the reference span, say V out. Since the output of the digital to analog converter is analog, what is the span? What is the range that V out can travel in between? And so that's the VREF span divided by 2 to the nth minus 1. One of the first ways that a digital to analog converter could be made is by using weighted resistors. Now, in this diagram here, we see a 4 bit digital to analog converter. The binary input is being uh, inputted at points B, C, B, and A and D is the most significant bit and A is the least significant bit. Now with the MSB carrying the most weight because it is the most significant bit, with it carrying the most weight it needs to again carry the most impact and by impact the thing that we're controlling here is the current. It's the current flowing out from the output pin out to V out. And so by controlling the weights of the resistors, we're controlling the output current when that output pin is high. So if D is high, we need to have the most amount of current flow through it because again, it is the most significant bit. It has the most weight. So we're going to choose a value. Now, in respect to all the other ones, it needs to be the least amount because it carries the most weight. But the relationship between it and the rest is very important. We see that point C has a resistor of 2K, which is twice as much as the 1K. Then B has a weighted value resistance of 4K, which is twice that of, of the previous amount, which is the 2K. And then the LSB is going to have the largest weighted resistor which is 8K, and that's because it's going to provide the least amount of current to be out. We can take this a little bit further and analyze an 8-bit digital to analog converter. And let's draw 8 outputs. And we'll label them. This is D7, D6, D5, D4, D3, D2, D1, and D0. Now using the weighted resistor approach, we will have a resistor for each output pin. And now the conversion again is done by the resistors. The outputs D7 down through D0, that's just an 8-bit uh, port if you want to call it that. It's an output port. It's sending out binary values, but it is 8-bit. Now, at the other side, or on the other side of the weighted resistors, they're all going to be tied all together, and we're going to bring out that point here, and that's called the out. Now, the weight of the resistors is not critically important as far as what value we start out with, but as to what they are in respect to each other, of course, is. Since D7 is the most significant bit, that one's going to have the least resistance to it. 
let's choose something like maybe 500 ohms. If D7 is 500 ohms, then D6 is going to have to be 1 kilo ohms. Now, why do we say that? Well, when you think about it, it's the amount of weight. We know that uh, D7 has a weight of 128 and D6 is 64. So you can see that one is half of the other. But when we're talking about the current, we need the resistance to actually be the least amount on the most significant bit, which is D7. And therefore, as we are going uh, uh, down in the number of bits from D7 down to zero, the resistance has to be increasing uh, twice every time. So D5 will have a weight of two kilo ohms. D4 will be four kilo ohms. D3 will be eight kilo ohms. D2 will have 16 K on it. And D1 will be 32K, and D0 will be 64K ohm. And these are the weights that will provide the proper current to be out to establish the correct voltage there. Now, how is this done? Well, I think probably the best way to do this is through an example. For uh, If we were to simply put values at the output here as to what's happening at the output. Let's just sign some values here. And let's say that that is the binary 8-bit word that's being sent out to the digital to analog converter. And we ask ourselves, what is the out? One of the first things that we can do is to figure out what the resolution is and what the voltage resolution is also. Resolution is equal to 2 to the nth, which in our case is 8-bit, so therefore it's 256 bits. That's the resolution, 256. Now, by 256, we mean those are the unique output values that we could have at, uh, at all 8 bits from D0 through D7. Now, the voltage resolution is equal to the voltage span. Well, let's just say that this particular output is working on 5 volt logic. So therefore, the outputs are going to be swinging between 0 and 5 volts. If it's a logic low, it's close to 0 volts. If it's a logic high, it's going to be 5 volts. So therefore, let's just say that the output will swing between 0 through 5 volts. So therefore, my voltage span, the span between 0 and 5 volts is 5 volts, divided by 2 to the nth minus 1, well that's 256 minus 1, and that's 255. That gives us a value of about 19.6 millivolts, and it's going to be per bit. Now, we can figure out what V out is based on the amount of weight total that we have at the output. We see that D7 is high, that has a weight of 128. D6 has a weight of 64 and then we look at D2 has a weight of 4 and then D1 has a weight of of 2 so we add all those together and we end up with 198 base 10 so to figure what V out is we can take the total weight which is 198 base 10 times 19.6 millivolts per bit. Now, when we talk about 198, that really is the number of bits. So therefore, the bits will cancel out, leaving just a voltage amount. So what is 198 times 19.6 millivolts? That is 3.88 volts. So V out would be equal to 3.88 volts. Now to prove this, we can go it a different way. Instead of working with the resolution and the voltage resolution, we could solve this just have uh, having used Ohm's law. Now I know some of you have not had a DC circuits class yet, but that's all right. I'm just going to run through this and just prove to you that that electrically we still end up with the same V out value. 
So let's place all of the resistors that are high in one group, and I will illustrate why. We have D7, which is the 500 ohms, and we have D6, which is also a high, which is the 1 kilo ohm, and we have D2, which is the 16K, and then we have D1, which is 32K. And all these are connected together, and the reason I say it is connected together because if all these have a high, at the port they're connected to plus 5 volts, and on the other side they're all connected to uh, all together to the point called V out, and so therefore, I'll just call this point V out right there. Now, for the other resistors, they have zeros on them, a logic zero. If it's a logic zero, in a sense, is that that point is per se grounded. So therefore, we can draw the other resistors in this manner. D5 would be a resistance that would be 2K. And then we have another resistor that is 4K. And then we have an 8K value. And then finally we have a 64K value. And the bottom of those resistors are all connected to ground. Now what we have here is a series parallel type circuit. And what I will do is to get these four resistors up here, put them in parallel, and then I'll also get these four resistances and put them in parallel. And I will end up with a circuit that's two resistors in series. One side's connected to ground, the other one is connected to plus five volts, and my V out is at this point. So let's figure out what those values are. The top resistance is 323.23 ohms. And the bottom resistance is 1.122 kilo ohms. Now solving for V out, V out is equal to 5 volts times 1.1 to 2 kilo ohms over the sum of the resistances which is 1.446 kilo ohms and solving for this we get 3.88 volts as well so we can see whichever way or whichever route we take we still in, end up with the same v out so for those binary values of highs and lows for that combination we're going to get a voltage an analog voltage that is 3.88 volts now the binary weighted DAC resistors produce the pop uh, the proper weighting of each bit in theory but it has some practical limitations the biggest problem is the large difference in resistor values between the LSB and the MSB especially in high resolution digital to analog converters. With the current IC fabrication technology, it is very difficult to produce resistant values over a wide resistance range that maintains an accurate ratio, especially with variations in temperature. It is preferable not to use this method for the above stated reasons. Here we have the R2R ladder one of the most widely used digital to analog conversion circuits that satisfy, uh, satisfies this requirement in that the resistance values span a range of only 2 to 1. In looking at the circuit diagram, we can see that the, there's only two values of resistances used here, whatever the R value is and also 2R. So, for example, if R is 1,000 ohms, then the 2R value is 2,000 ohms. So it's a, it's, it's a lot easier to make a, a, a digital channel converter with only two resistance values instead of having eight or possibly even more different resistor values. Now, the way that this operates is beyond the scope of this course, 
but this circuit is widely used. It's used in many, many different applications. And for the most part, this is the type of digital to analog converter that is found in audio sound cards and uh, your phones and uh, in many different other configurations as well. Here is an example of an integrated circuit chip and uh, this one it is a digital to analog converter and in looking inside we can see that it uses an R2R ladder approach. Regardless of the approach we can represent the digital to analog converter by a simple block. So let's call this our digital to analog converter and let's give it some inputs. Let's say that this is a 6-bit digital to analog converter so we have 6 inputs and the output is going to be the out. Let's call this D0, this input D1, D2, D3, D4, and D5. Again, whatever the internal is, that's not what we're concerned with at this point. It could be a weighted type of approach. It could be an R2R ladder. Regardless of what's inside of the block, it still will work the same way from the perspective of what the equations are to solve what the output is based on the inputs and on the range of conversion. So for example, let us again state that this is going to be working between 0 and 5 volts as far as V out. So let's assign it a conversion range of 0 to 5 volts. And let's assign it a value at the input. Let's say that this is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And let's solve for V out. Based on 0 through 5 volts, and let's say that the logic that's being used here is 5 volts, therefore, what is your V out? Well, first of all, let's figure out what the resolution is. Resolution is equal to 2 to the 6th. And therefore, that is 64. Next, let's figure out the voltage resolution. And that is equal to the voltage span, which it goes from 0 through 5 volts, so the span itself is 5 volts, divided by 2 to the nth minus 1, so that would be 63. So the voltage resolution is 79.4 millivolts per bit. Now to figure out V out, we can say that V out is equal to the voltage resolution times the weighted amount at the inputs. Alright, so therefore, the voltage resolution is 79.4 millivolts per bit times, what's the weight? Well, we know that this is worth 1, this is 2, this is 4, this is 8, 16, and 32. The weight is going to be 8 plus 4 plus 2. That gives me a weight of 14 base 10 so therefore that's going to be the voltage resolution times 14 bits per se so therefore the bits will in a sense cancel out so all you have left is voltage so that's going to be 79.4 millivolts times 14 and that gives us a voltage amount of 1.111 volts and that's the output that is your V out so again there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of one is what is the conversion range the other one is what is the input values that you have to uh, 
uh, take in into the digital channel converter and then from there you can figure out what your output is now let's say for instance we have an 8-bit digital to analog converter but the conversion range in this case is negative 2.5 volts through a positive 2.5 volts let's give that it still has a 5 volt span but the span is now not 0 through 5 it's a negative 2.5 through a positive 2.5 and internally everything has been adjusted so it works inside of that range but we still need to figure out what our V out is this is our V out and we still need to have our inputs and we said it was 8 bits so it's 3 4 5 6 7 8 have 8 inputs we'll call this one D7 D6 D5 all the way down to D0 and let's say that we do provide a value here and let's say that we have a value of 0 1 0 0 1 1 0 1 that is the binary value being sent in but the critical point here is that we have an output span of negative 2.5 volts through positive 2.5 and the question is what is V out well, first of all, we need to figure out, again, two basic things. One is, what is the resolution? Resolution is 2 to the nth, which is equal to 2 to the 8th, which is equal to 256 in this case. And then we have to figure out the voltage resolution, which is equal to the span, the voltage span. Well, it goes from negative 2.5 to positive 2.5, so it's a span of 5 volts, divided by 2 to the nth minus 1, which will be 255. Doing the math, we still have a voltage resolution of 19.6 millivolts per bit. Now the question is, what is V out? Well, we need to figure out what the voltage amount is. What is, in a sense, just your voltage amount? Now before we called it V out, but that was because the, because the range started at zero volts. So therefore now I'm gonna call it just something a little bit different. I'm just going to call it the voltage amount. Voltage amount would be again your voltage resolution times your weight at the inputs. Weight at inputs. Now with that we have 19.6 millivolts per bit and how many bits do we have at the input? Well we have 64 because that's high and we have 8 because that one's high we have 4 and we have 1 add all those up together comes out to 77 so we have 77 bits again the bits will cancel out right there and we only have millivolts left and so that's going to be equal to a voltage of 1.509 if you wanted to, I suppose you could round to 1.51 volts. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that I have a voltage amount that is 1.51 volts above my starting point. Previously, if we had a range of 0 through 5 volts, then it would be 1.51 volts above the starting point of 0 volts. But my starting point is not zero volts it is negative 2.5 volts so I am 1.51 volts above negative 2.5 volts and that would be then negative 0.99 volts and so that's my output again it's a negative 0.99 volts now what this means again is that we have to keep uh, just uh, or pay attention to what the starting of my conversion span is if it's zero then pretty much whatever you figure out as far as the voltage amount that's what V out is but in our case we're starting out at a negative 2.5 volts so therefore we're going to be 1.51 volts above my starting point which puts me at a negative 0.99 volts 
and that would be the answer there. And let's uh, work on one more. Again, let's say that it is an 8-bit digital to analog converter. We have eight inputs right there. We go from D7 all the way to D0. And we have our V out. Now, let's say that the range of conversion for this digital to analog converter is negative 5 volts through positive 5 volts. And all of the range expansion and so on and so forth is done in the electronics inside of the digital to analog converter. All we need to figure out is what is V out. Let's, uh, let's send it out uh, or let's provide some inputs uh, to this digital to analog converter. And let's say that this is a 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we have a binary value being inputted as to what will be a high, what will be a low. So one of the first things we have to do again is figure out what the resolution is. Again, figuring out what these two values are, resolution and voltage resolution, is very, very important. Resolution is 2 to the nth, which is equal to 2 to the 8th, which in our case is, again, 256. The voltage resolution is equal to the voltage span of conversion. Well, the span of conversion here, well, it's from negative 5 to positive 5, so therefore the span, the voltage span, is 10 volts. So it's 10 volts over 2 to the nth minus 1, which would be 255. So therefore, the output is 39.2 millivolts per bit. Now, once we figure that, we can figure out what the voltage amount is. And again, the voltage amount is going to be the amount of voltage above my starting point. And my starting point of conversion is negative 5 volts. So the voltage amount is going to be based on the voltage resolution times the weighted input, or the weight of input. So therefore, the voltage resolution is 39.2 millivolts per bit times a weight of what? Well, D7 is 128, and then D6 is 64, and those added together will be equal to 192. So we have a weight of 192, 192 bits. The bits will cancel out, of course, still. And therefore, we have 39.2 millivolts times 192. And that gives us a value of 7.5 three volts. Now again, this is the amount of voltage that's going to be above my starting point. My starting point is negative five volts. So 7.53 volts above my starting point of negative five volts puts me at a positive 2.53 volts. And that is the V out. This concludes the presentation on digital to analog converters.